welcome to the Shivan Library. Today we are looking at the history, law, and impact of one of Magic's most iconic cards ever, Hurlun Minotaur. I understand if you have many questions at this point, especially if you are a newer player, but believe you me, this card played a major role back in the day. But without further ado, let's grab the bull by the horns and take a deep dive into the pages of Magic's history. Hurlun Minotaur was the poster child of Magic the Gathering in its early days, as Magic was trying to find its style, and especially on promotional material, Hurlun Minotaur was there to take the role of a flagship creature that evoked the feel of a high fantasy adventure. The artwork by Anson Maddox featured the tattooed Minotaur with white fur, which became the distinguishing feature of the Hurlun tribe. This face was everywhere. The first place you as a new player would see this piece of art was on the starter bricks and booster boxes. On the shelves, these box arts would give you a glimpse of the fantastic things you would find in them, and Hurlun Minotaur made the short list of featured images. The Minotaur would show up on all core set boxes from Alpha all the way to 4th edition. It was often one of the two main card arts right there on top of the box. 4th edition in 1995 was also a highlight for Hurlun Minotaur. This was the first time booster packs had pictures of actual cards on them, and Hurlun Minotaur was one of the five arts chosen alongside Mana Vault, Brassman, Mesa Pegasus, and Spirit Link. Between 1993 and 1995, we would see the Minotaur on a lot of products, both official and unofficial, on printed material as well as supplemental items not relating to the actual game. In 1995, Wizards of the Coast released their first wall calendar, and who else to feature on the cover than our favorite furry creature? The Minotaur was also the picture for the month of August. This particular calendar is part of my own collection, and it has been accurate again in 2023, and next time will be in 2034. In 1995, Wizards also released a 6x9 oversized promo card of Hurlun Minotaur. These were intended for stores that sold magic cards to be used as window decoration or other set dressing on the shelves to promote magic. One of the more interesting products to feature the Minotaur was the Magic the Gathering miniature line released by Heartbreaker in 94. They released four sets of small pewter miniatures featuring a total of 48 figurines from the game. Hurlun Minotaur was the first miniature of the first set bearing the lowest product number 9101. The design and cast quality was not amazing even for that time. They were somewhat on par with the Ralpatha figures, but could not hold a candle to what Citadel was releasing at the time. Even though the figurines were distinguishable, and in most cases you could easily tell which card the figure was from even without the blister pack. When 5th edition hit the shelves, Hurlun Minotaur was no longer the face of the game, and would be quite abruptly phased out. The last major product to use the likeness was the 1998 limited edition statue collection. Sculpted by Randy Bowen and produced by Dark Horse Comics, only 5,000 numbered statues were ever released. They were 15 inch tall resin figures that came fully painted, and the collection also featured Sarah Angel, Shivan Dragon, and Spirit Link. Hurlun Minotaur was part of the Gamma card set, the original playtest set that Richard Garfield used to test magic as a game and the cards themselves. Back then, the card was simply called Minotaur. The playtest cards did not have any law or unique names yet, as those would be included after the design and the game mechanics were cemented. The playtest card featured a picture of a Minotaur from the Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual's first edition. This artwork features a fairly traditional Minotaur, which does bear a slight resemblance to the final artwork by Anson Maddox, though the axe-wielding design 
was used more on the statues and miniatures. The design of Hurlun Minotaur did not require any changes from its latest version. While the mana cost may look expensive to modern eyes, it reads as 3 mana of which 2 must be red, and not 5 mana in total. The cost, stats, lack of abilities and color remained the same to the final product. Red color in alpha did feature an interesting 3 mana creature rarity cycle, which taught players about how rarer cards could simply be better versions of the same design. Granite Gargoyle as the rare, Uthidan Troll as the uncommon, and Grey Ogre as the common card. All 3 mana 2-2 two, two creatures with better and better abilities. Hurlun Minotaur isn't on this list, but it competed with Grey Ogre as a red 3 mana common creature. Many players did wonder why you would ever want to play the Ogre over the Minotaur, as the double red casting cost wasn't something people took into account as much then as they do now. The stat line was perfectly fine for that time and especially for a common creature. The additional point in toughness compared to Grey Ogre was significant, as there were dozens of creatures with power 2 or less in early magic. Surviving combat while taking out the Savannah Lions, Elvis Archer, Grizzly Bears, White Knight or even an unbuffed Mishra's factory was extremely useful. Not having any abilities, the player would only be drawn to the flavor text of the card. It spoke of the Hurloon Mountains and of the Minotaurs who lived there. It described them as creatures who loved battle and sang bellowing hymns to the dead, be they friend or foe. This was the first taste of the shamanic nature of the Hurloon tribe, and something we would see in other tribes as well later on in the storyline. The tribe of Hurloon were not yet separated from the other tribes when Mishra and Urza fought on Dominaria. Only after the Golgothian Silex was activated and the Ice Age was brought onto the plain, the Minotaurs from the north had to travel south. The other tribes of Stahan, which was the original name of the mountain range on the very north ends of the domains, did not wander south like the Hurlun tribe, but rather east over the frozen seas. The nation of Stahan now lies northeast of the domains and north of Urborg. The separation was caused by the Hurlun tribe being seen as heretics for the belief that humans and minotaurs shared a common ancestor. This feud actually comes down to fingers and how many there should be. Stahan and Mertian minotaurs had four fingers in each hand, while Hurlun minotaurs had five. As the scripture says in the first chapter of Knowing Purity, by this shall you know the division. The fifth finger is Flakkach. Hurlun tribe settled on the continent of Irona, the main island of the domains, right next to Ironclaw and to my knowledge, Uthedan. Hurlun did attract some interest from the nearby regions. Most saw them as dangerous creatures but some individuals, like Thorsten von Ursus, believed that they were more than just savage beasts, and studied the Minotaur philosophy for several years. Apart from this, Hurlun Minotaurs were left to live alone in their mountains, and they did not feel the need to wander. Their role in Magic's large story arc was basically unnoticeable. The next time Hurlun would be mentioned, would be when the Phyrexians would invade Dominaria. Even though Stahan and especially Mertin Minotaurs have plenty of lore and story about them, there has only been three major tribes of Minotaurs in the early years of magic cards, Hurlun, Anaba and Talrum. After Hurlun being present from the start, the second tribe we encountered was Anaba. They lived on the Koskun Mountains on the plain of Ulgrotha and were featured in the Homelands expansion. They were even more connected to the spirits of the dead than the Hurloon Minotaurs, and instead of just bellowing their hymns, they were particular to the sound of didgeridoos which were used to summon them. The third tribe was Talrum, who resided in the Talrum Mountains in Jamura, 
they were introduced in the Mirage block, which took place on the sun's scorched supercontinent. Even though all Minotaurs in Magic have been depicted as aggressive and xenophobic, the Talrum were shoulders above the others. They were also the most technologically advanced of all Minotaurs so far, but that isn't saying much compared to the other races. Talrum gave us the most prominent Minotaur character of early magic, Tangarth. Tangarth was a member of the original crew of the skyship Weatherlight. He fought against the Phyrexian invasion, only to be captured by Volrath and nearly brainwashed by the Phyrexian mutation. In the story of Weatherlight, Tangarth and the crew were able to save what was left of her loon from the invaders. And even though many Minotaurs were mutated, they saw Tangarth as their champion. In later years, Minotaurs have been seen on different planes, mainly as singular cards. They have mostly lacked the same tribal design of old, and even though places like Carplusa and Shatterskull have been mentioned by name, and planes like Ravnica saw recruited Minotaurs, Amonkhet had Neheb the Worthy, and on Sendika, the ogre slave master Kazul had Minotaur forces. Nothing was told about the tribes. The only exception to this has been the plain of Theros, which takes its design from ancient Greece. Morgis, the god of wrath and pain, had plenty of Minotaurs worship him. Depicted as a Minotaur-looking deity, Mogis had fanatics, slaughter priests, war chanters, soul reapers, and plenty more residents of the Minotaur city Skophos following his every whim. Minotaurs have become a mainstay in modern magic, but the law on them has taken a backseat. Now they are present on nearly every plane, just living among the other creatures. No more secluded tribes or shamanistic traditions. Just another fantasy race to fill a scene. Hurlun Minotaur has not seen many reprints since its glory days. The 5th edition print is the last tournament legal paper release, after which we got the Digital Masters Edition 3 print for Magic Online and the 2020 Arena Beginner Set version. The Arena's digital only version is also the only other artwork that has ever been used for Hurlun Minotaur. This artwork by Isi Medrano shares that same white fur design as Anson's original, though this time the art is more modern and action-oriented. The Minotaur, who now stands armed on a mountain cliff, is ready for battle, perhaps ambushing a nearby traveler or monster. A clear departure of the original's more stoic and portrait-like art. Then there is the infamous Magic 30th reprint set, but less we speak of that, the better. It is possible that Hurlun Minotaur may see the light of day again. The resurgence of Minotaurs in magic could mean that Hurlun Minotaur might pop up as an easy common creature with a relevant creature type. Especially products like Jumpstart or Commander Precondex could be a place to fit it in. But even without ever getting a new printed version, Hurlun Minotaur has left an everlasting legacy. The card has been referenced and the land of Hurloon has brought since other Minotaur cards. The first one on our list showed up on the first joke set, Unglued, when we were introduced to Hurloon Wrangler. This jeans-wearing, white-coated Minotaur was able to punish your opponents for their choice in clothing with its denim walk ability. While Minotaurs from Anaba were present in Homelands and Talrum in Mirage and Visions, we did see one from Hurloon pop up near that time. Weatherlight gave us Hurloon Shaman, a similarly built creature but with a symmetrical land destruction ability if it would ever go to the graveyard. From 1997 we jump all the way to 2018 when Firesong and Sunspeaker were printed in the throwback set Dominaria which Richard Garfield himself helped design. This set brought many of the original locations and tribes back, and from Hurloon came the Minotaur cleric siblings. Their ability to combine damage and life gain would be seen again in 2022's Dominaria United when Hurloon Battle Hymn was printed. 
the hymns that were mentioned in the original Alpha flavor text would finally get their own card, and this spell can damage creatures while gaining you life. The latest Minotaur from Hurloon to this day is Sethron Hurloon General. It was the theme-defining rare card in the 2020 Minotaur Jumpstart pack, which for some reason did not include the original Minotaur. There was one more card worth mentioning. Minotaur Explorer in 2001's Odyssey set seems to depict a distinctly white Minotaur, though not clearly stated, this one seems to be from her loon. The flavor text does speak of the surviving Herloon and Talrum Minotaurs searching for one another after the devastating Phyrexian invasion. And this is where the Herloon story ends for now. Should the game return to Dominaria once again, we may see more cards relating to Herloon and the Minotaurs that inhabited it, but till that day, this is everything we have. Even though it may seem funny, Herloon Minotaur truly was one of the most iconic cards and the face of the whole game. But those times are long gone. And so it is time to close the books and return them to the shelves for now. Thank you for visiting the Shivan Library, and I hope to see you here again.